Hello iPad leaders, it's so nice to see you. My name is Karen, I'm from iPad Lettering and I'm here to help you get the most out of your iPad, whether that is with lettering or art or journaling and planning. Although today's video is a little bit different because today I wanna to show you what I actually have on my iPad. I wanna show you some of the accessories that I'm using and then also all my favorite apps. Today's video is sponsored by Paperlike. I will be talking about screen protectors a little bit later in this video, but I just wanted to mention it for full transparency. Transparency. Now let's start with that most important thing and that is of course the iPad. My favorite iPad is that 12.9 inch iPad Pro. This is that fourth generation iPad that I have right now and I, I love this iPad. So this is my favorite. But then I also have an iPad Air. I got that fourth generation iPad Air here and I still think this is a really, really nice iPad, especially if you don't want a 12.9 inch. If that screen size is a little bit too big for you, then that fourth generation iPad Air is a really really nice iPad as well and then some of the accessories that I like to use so the first that you've already seen is a cover I really like the covers that Apple makes for the iPads that one for the iPad Air is bright orange and I love the color I usually tend to go for the black color and because pink is not available for the iPad Pro I have gone for the black cover for my iPad Pro and it's super easy to pop on really all you have to do is just pop the iPad on it it and then it sticks to it so this is super nice so just pop it on like this and then close it and then it protects your iPad very nicely so very much like these covers you can also fold them back so you can put your iPad at different angles you can put it like this or then you can turn it around and have it like this as well so this is super handy and then of course I have an Apple Pencil this is the second generation Apple Pencil and it works with both the iPad Air and also the iPad Pro so this is super handy and then you'll see here I've got this little silicon case it's just like a little sleeve that I like very much it makes the Apple Pencil ever so slightly thicker but what's nice about it is that it sticks on the iPad like this and it still charges on the iPad so you don't have to take it off and so I like this very much and then I also have this brush stylus here that I like to use it's super cute it's got a brush tip on one end and then it's got the sort of a normal stylus pen on the other end I really like painting watercolors with this brush it's so nice to use just to see how the colors float on the screen and then you can also blend the colors like this and you can smudge and it just creates a really nice effect. You could do the exact same thing with your fingers or with the Apple Pencil, but I just really like using this little brush and so I thought I'd show you. The brush is made by Atmosphere, and of course I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video. I'm also going to leave links to all the other accessories that I'm showing you in the description box of this video so make sure to check them out there. And then I also want to know from you which are your favorite iPad accessories. Maybe I don't have them yet. Maybe you should try them out. So definitely leave comments below this video so I can check out your favorite accessories as well. And then another Another accessory that I actually really like is this little bean bag here. This is called an eye beanie and I use this when I'm sitting on the couch littering on the iPad and it's super nice because you can just put the iPad on it at any angle that you like and then it stays there and it gives you a really nice surface to work with. So I like using this eye beanie a lot and my husband has one as well and he even takes it on holiday because he likes it so much. And then that next accessory that I want to show you is that keyboard and and it's a super nice keyboard so this is super handy especially if you don't have a laptop and if you want to use your iPad as a laptop replacement then this keyboard is really really nice it is super expensive so if you do have a laptop already then I probably don't recommend it because it's expensive and the iPad is not really a laptop replacement but make sure you watch my keyboard review video to hear my exact thoughts about the keyboard and then that next accessory that I have on my iPad and this is something I get asked about so much and that is a screen protector and yes I do use a screen protector and I use that paper like screen protector. I've been using screen protectors on my iPads for about three or four years now and it's really made a huge difference to my lettering. It makes the screen a lot less slippery and it gives you a really nice feel when you write or paint on it. And I even think it sounds nicer as well. 
It's very easy to install and it also comes in a pack of two so you can replace it when needed. Although I usually leave my screen protector on for a year or so before I replace it. What you can do as well to make it last a little bit longer is wipe it down with some soap and then it becomes a little bit more grippy again. And then one of the questions I get so much and that is whether or not it wears down the nib of your Apple Pencil. I was very surprised to hear this question when it first came up because I've never experienced this. I've had this Apple Pencil for over three years and I've only had to replace the nib once and that was because I accidentally dropped the Apple Pencil and then the nib was a little bit bent. It certainly doesn't wear off from using it with the paper-like screen protector. Just make sure you get the original paper like and not any of the fake ones. I'm going to leave a link in the description of the video so you can make sure that you grab the right paper like screen protector for your iPad. So these are all the accessories that I'm using with the iPad. But now let's see what's on the iPad as well. Let's have a look at some of my favorite apps. I've had an iPad Pro for over five years and during the time I have actually collected quite a few apps. Downloading and trying out apps is probably one of my favorite things to do other than making Procreate brushes. And so I have a huge collection of apps here, most of which I don't use that much. So I just want to show the apps that I do use probably on a weekly basis. Some of them I use every day, but this is not an in-depth review of any of the apps. But if you would like me to do a review of any of the apps that I'm showing you, let me know which apps you would like to find out more about and then I can make another video. So to get started, it's probably easiest to have a look here at the bottom row in the dock. I always put the apps that I'm using the most in the dock here and an app I'm using every day is the Gmail app of course so that's where I have all my emails and I really like using the Gmail app because I'm only using Gmail email addresses. And then second up is Procreate. Of course, this is my all time favorite iPad app. So it has a special place here right in the dock. Then um, hey, I've got Instagram here. And yes, you can actually use the Instagram app on the iPad as well. The Instagram app is actually a phone app, but you can still have it on the iPad. It just looks a little bit different, but I like having it on the iPad and I don't mind that it's not an iPad app. And then I also have the files app. I'm actually using iCloud quite a lot to store my files. I also have Dropbox, I have Google Drive, I have all the different storage options. And I've started using iCloud more and more just because I have a Mac and I have an iPhone and I have an iPad and I really like the Apple ecosystem to share files. So this works really well. But I still use Dropbox as well and you can actually access Dropbox from the files app at the same time. So this is super handy to have. And then next up we have Xenia and Xenia is a journaling app that I've been using for almost a year now and I very much love this app. I'm using this for my planners, for my journals, to capture my thoughts as a gratitude journal. There's so many applications of this app and I really feel it has made a huge difference to my life in the last year. And then next up we have the Good Notes app. I've used this app at the start of last year before I found Xenia. I was going to use it for my journals but then once I've started using Xenia, Good Notes took a step in the back. Unfortunately, I just prefer using the Xenia app for my journals and that's why Good Notes doesn't get used so much anymore. And then next up we have the Notion app and this is the app that I'm using to organize all my content, especially YouTube videos. And I've got a little database system here that I've created to figure out when I'm going to make videos, what types of videos that I'm going to make and how to organize them. And so this app has been super useful. It works on the iPad, it works on the Mac and it works on the phone. And I'm using this app every week to plan my social media content. So now these are the most important apps that I probably use every day, but I want to show you some other apps that I'm using as well, especially the design apps that you're probably most curious about. So I very much like using Affinity Designer, which is right here. Affinity Designer is a vector based app as opposed to Procreate, which is pixel based. So if you want to avoid pixelation in your artwork, if you need SVG files or, or if you need huge files, then Affinity Designer is an amazing app and I very much recommend it. There's also the Vectornator app, which is free. This is a vector-based program as well, but because I've been using Affinity Designer so much and I'm very much used to it, I'm not using Vectornator so much these days. And then a new play on block when it comes to vector-based apps is actually Adobe Illustrator. This has been released late last year. It's a brand new app on the iPad. And if you have a subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud, I very much recommend trying out Adobe Illustrator. I'm actually going to do a little bit of a review video at some stage about 
about Illustrator as well, but it's still in very early stages. So it doesn't have that much functionality yet, but I think it's a very promising app, especially if you do have a subscription, then I very much recommend that you try it out. If you don't have a subscription, then it's very expensive and you're probably better off using Affinity Designer instead. I also have Affinity Photo on the iPad. I have Fresco and I also have Adobe Photoshop. And these are apps that I use every now and then, but I don't use them that much. I really rely on that Procreate app the most for any graphic design work that I do on the iPad. But now let's have a look in this folder here where it says design. So this is my folder of apps that I'm just trying out. Sometimes I play with them and sometimes I don't. There is some fun apps in here. So I just want to show you a few of my favorites so that you can see what they are in case you want to try them out yourself. The first app I want to show you is called Oilers and that is a super fun app which kind of automatically generates a oil painting from a photo and because it's so fun I just want to quickly show you how this works. So you can select a photo from your photos app and then you can have that photo transform into a painting which is pretty cool. So you can choose different styles here. Let's try Aframov Nights and see what happens. So now what happens is that photo gets analyzed and then it creates this surreal artwork from the photo and you can see kind of how it works and how it renders the painting in real life. So it almost looks like it's getting painted now for you. And so this is fun. I like using this for entertainment. I don't really use it to create anything with it. I just think this is a really entertaining app and this is a lot of fun. And then another fun app that I want to show you is called Flame Painter. It creates these really cool flame painting effects. Again, this is not an app that I'm using a lot, but it's fun to play with and you can create some really cool effects with it. And then next up we have Eye Ornament. And this is a fun app as well to create repeating patterns. And so you can be a little bit creative. You can choose different patterns here. I also like using Adobe Capture to create vector art from pixel art. But I actually have another video where I'm going in depth with the Adobe Capture app. So make sure you watch that video as well to see how the app works. And then we have Emma Engine here. And this is a cool app that you can use to create vector art from a photo. So this is an image that I've made in Procreate. So now let's see how we can convert this into vector art. There's different styles to choose from. So this is definitely another app that's well worth trying out. I also like using the iPhone app. And this is an app that I use to install fonts on my iPad. This is super handy and definitely watch my video where I'm showing you how to use this app as well. If you're interested in installing custom fonts on your iPad. Now, let me know which is your favorite iPad app. I'm super keen to hear about your favorite apps. Maybe I haven't mentioned it. Maybe there's an app that I should try out as well. And so I'm, of course, super curious to hear what those apps are. I really hope this was helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And then I'm also going to bloop up another couple of videos with apps that I've mentioned in this video so you can find out more about those apps. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.